Rocky Patel, the Edge Barrel Aged. Hey everybody, I'm Kane. This is Scarblog. Alright, so check this out. This is one of the uh, newer offerings from Rocky Patel. This is uh, Barrel Aged, which means it's supposed to be, if, my, if I'm not mistaken, aged in whiskey barrels. The actual, the actual tobacco itself, I think before it's rolled, gets aged in whiskey barrel. My apologies about the wind, by the way. I cannot do anything about it. It is just like this constant gust for some reason. Anyway, as you can see, we've got nice large double cap on there. Focus. Everything looks nice and tight. Has a nice little foot band here. Going. Obviously, you have to yank that. Hopefully, that's not. Okay, good. Always have to be careful because the way that they end up gluing cigar bands on is with potato starch. And sometimes, if you're not careful, you'll end up getting this big glob of blech that ends up sticking the cigar to the band. And needless to say, every time you take that off, it ends up making a nice big gouge and, you know, it threatens to unravel the cigar. A little bit of an irritation. Modern, most modern cigars that are, like, newly coming out typically tend to not do that. They just use a sticker. I hope you can still hear me, by the way. Still, it's not very. smells good. Sweet cedar. It's very nice. Mmm, yeah. That's good. It starts off like a nice whiskey. Sweet, little cedary. I want to say it kind of like almost... It's kind of got that kind of punch thing going on. A lot of flavors going on here. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just started. Okay. So, uh, right at the first, I'm still audible due to the wind noise. Um, the Edge is one of those cigars you have to be kind of careful with. The first time I ever had an Edge, yeah, I finished it and it left me uh, praying to porcelain. For whatever reason, Rocky tends to blend these ones a little strong, so just a word of warning. Word, word, word warning you know. I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is actually good and lit really well nice and uh, get this down the first inch and give an update and see if anything wakes up. I'm not really too sure where to stand to get the least amount of wind noise, but anyway, good solid inch in. And I still guess the wind later. Uh, so far, I can say the retro hail is a bit on the spicy end. Whiskey barrel kind of thing. Yeah, you get the kind of slightly whiskeyish tone. There's a little sweetness, a little smoky, a little woody. Yeah, basically, it's like it's got a natural little infusion of whiskey. It's like it's got its own natural little infusion of whiskey, uh, minus the stupidly loud motorcycle. Yeah, what it is about, like, you know, the Japanese bikes. Everybody that gets onto it thinks they're a drag racer. And they're just going to get milk. I don't get that. Anyway. <laughs> so far you can definitely tell that it's been aged in a whiskey barrel. Which I'm going to say is a good thing. Well, anyway, this has got a lot going on in it, so I'm going to see if anything kind of wakes up, stands up, or alters. I'm at the halfway point. I'll update you from there. Alright, real quick. This is the reason why I stopped using the ash length as a quality marker, because sometimes things happen, uh, as much as just the way it's made, that ash will flop off before it gets to the halfway point. I used to use the ash as basically a construction quality marker because it's like, if it can get burned, it's still holding the, it'll be actually physically weakened through fire, and still hold the shape. You know, that's good construction. 
thing is there's some cigars that are really high quality, really well made, and they're ash flowers and feathers and does weird things. There's some that just flops off every two in, you know, every inch or so, because of reasons. That's why I kind of started thinking. I started to, I kind of started to think I need to pay a little bit more attention to like how many caps are in this. This little thing has got a triple cap on there. Yeah, the actual, the actual criteria for quality construction: how many caps it has, how tight it is, whether it's using large veins. And you see these little nubby bubbles, little toothy bits here. I don't know if they can, I don't know if they show up. But you'll see this kind of texturing. You look at it in person. What that is is that's uh, the essential oils of the tobacco kind of bubbling to the surface, which means that's good, that's flavor. You want those. <laughs> if you don't have those, it's not the end of the world, but you might have a little bit of a bland cigar. Anyway, just wanted to do a quick little update. Alright, solid halfway point. Funny thing, I stand on this side of the bridge, no wind at all. Go figure. Anyway, flavors so far are kind of, uh, kind of a lot. <laughs> Things, nothing's really standing out, which is uh, interesting. Uh, this kind of goes back to something I keep comparing cigars to music, and that is you have your rock song cigars and your symphony cigars. This is one of those symphonies where you have all these little pizzas. All these little bits and pieces come together and make one cohesive whole. That's what this is doing. As opposed to the rock song, which has that one flavor that stands out and is the guitar solo. Kind of an odd way to put that, but anyway, in a nutshell, that's kind of what it is. I have a hair that is tickling my lip. It's driving me nuts. Sorry about that. Oh, I'll mess with that later. Uh, so far, though, like I said, You can definitely tell it's been aged in some whiskey barrels, you know, the actual tobacco. I imagine they do that with just the tobacco first, before they roll it. But, uh, yeah, basically there's a lot of different flavors that kind of all meld together. There's sweet, there's a little cedary, there's a little kind of earthiness, good clean tobacco. Occasionally a little kind of baking spice. Given that this is probably aged in whiskey barrels, I, keep in mind, I'm not entirely positive if it's actually aged in whiskey barrel. I would imagine that's what barrel aged means. Because, you know, that's kind of been one of the latest trends re recently. You know, you'll see, like, um, who else is doing that? I know Drew Estate's doing that. Gurkha's doing that. Diesel's doing that. And a barrel age is kind of a, uh, a new thing. Get an old whiskey barrel, take your tobacco, stuff it in there, let it sit for about three to six months, and then pull it out and roll your cigars. You get that little kind of whiskey-ish infusion. So, clearly, this is an excellent whiskey cigar. Gee, go figure. But of course, uh, any decent coffee will also go very well with it as well. Uh, whiskey cocktails, uh, the old-fashioned Manhattan, things like that. Maybe not in Manhattan, but definitely an old-fashioned for sure. This, this would be a perfect accompaniment to an old-fashioned. But uh, overall, though, excellent flavors. Just nothing's really standing out and grabbing your attention. And that's kind of not really, you know, the point of this. It's supposed to be this big overall experience that kind of Hopefully, eventually, ends up painting the story for you. That's always one of the better kinds of cigars. But it's when you get all these little flavors that stir a memory in your head or a, an image, a thought, a scene, something like that. And some of the best cigars out there will basically use flavor to tell you a story. And I'm not sure if that's what this one's trying to do, but we'll see how it goes. And anyway, I'm going to smoke this down to where it burns my fingers and uh, give a final update from there. Well, this looks like a pretty good point to wrap it up. Provided, of course, I can manage to stave off some wind noise. So far, nothing really stood out as being a particular flavor to grab a hold of. You know. That said, the flavors that were there were very much present, very good, and very consistent. Like I said previously, the flavors overall have been kind of baking spice, a little sweetness, a little bit of a kind of uh, whiskey barrel, you know. A little smoky, a little whiskey-ish, you know. Occasional sweet cedary. But overall, not exactly a whole lot else to say. I mean, it's kind of getting down to the point where it's just turning into hot tobacco, but you know, every cigar does that. 
It's kind of interesting. Isn't it? I mean, this is a very good whiskey cigar, but uh, it seems to be a little overly focused on just that one area. It's a good cigar, don't get me wrong. Definitely worth the money. But if you're into flavor transitions or one big, bold flavor that grabs you, this is probably not going to fit the bill. That's it. If you just want to kick back in the high afternoon with a whiskey cocktail and something complimentary to smoke, yeah, you really can do it. You can really do a lot worse. I know it kind of sounds like I'm kind of poo pooing this a little bit, but it's, it's actually a really good cigar. You know, if you get a chance, definitely check, definitely check them out. Blah, 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 blah. I can remember how to speak. But, like I said, if you're into big flavor transitions, this is probably not it. Red Hell has been kind of consistently spicy. A slight sweetness in the background. Yeah, anyway, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I don't know why there's always, right when I'm going to talk, somebody on a motorcycle is just like, you know, hauling ass up the road. And here comes somebody through the tunnel. Okay, so that's a cyclist. Apparently bicycles are uh, still a thing. I was going to say something else that's going to be a little bit more politically minded, but I'm just not going to go there. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, there was a thing if, like a year or two back where they really pushed the whole bicycle thing. Why? I don't know. Anyway, that's a little minor gripe. Right? Yeah, there's not really much else to say. Good cigar for the price. Definitely a top end classic style cigar. And yeah, Spark went up and grab a whiskey. And that's pretty much all I got to say on this one. If you like this video or any other video, like, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know if you had a different experience or if you want to see anything reviewed. Beyond that, check out my Twitch stream Sunday to Friday night, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Uh, I tend to stream a couple of different games, so uh, just kind of look for me a little bit. And I'm kind of running out of things to say and rambling because I kind of don't know how to end. Anyway, <laughs> that's pretty much all I got for this one. I'll see you next time.